Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that. No, just fuel. Don't give me the fire. No fire, just give me fuel. Just fuel, no fire. Just give me, not fire. Don't give me the fire, no fire. Please, just fuel. We are doing fuel today, guys. Today, <clears throat> I'm a little scratchy. I'm coming back from a sickness, so that's why I've been out the last few days. I haven't done much um, on any of my uh, social media uh, regarding this swap, and that's because I have been out sick. But I am back, and we are doing fuel today. We're gonna be installing the in-tank fuel pump. We're gonna be installing the filter with the regulator from an E46M3, and we're gonna be going through the, uh, the wiring for the EPK relay assembly um, that is operated on CAN. So we'll talk about that all today. Stay tuned. Two N54 pump. All it is is just a regular pump. Two wires, red and brown, um, supplying power to the pump. This is the uh, outlet of the fuel that goes to the engine. And we will be substituting that on the E36 with a Walbro LP255. Um, it'll have a regulator and a filter on it from the E46M3. And there are some tubings that we may or may not use, a connector housing. Um, and uh, this will be an in-tank fuel pump. So we will end up controlling it with the EPK fuel pump relay. Um, and, and from there, we'll, uh, we'll end up going through the wiring uh, probably in a later episode, but we'll uh, at least gloss over it uh, today and uh, show you how that's done. This right here under the driver frame rail here is going to be uh, the location of the uh, new um, filter and regulator assembly. All right, so these are the five lines. I've marked them out here. The one closest to us is the fuel send. That's this big guy here, right? This guy next to it is the fuel return, same size line. Then the blue one is a plastic line, actually. It's your carbon canister. That's to keep the pressure in the fuel tank uh, equalized. Um, and then you have these two smaller ones, which are your brake lines. <clears throat> There's two independent brake lines that are going out to the back of the car, one for each wheel. Um, on the E30, there's only one brake line that goes back and it goes to a T-splitter uh, right over the diff and then that goes to each of the wheels. But on the E36, there's just uh, there's actually two independent lines that are coming straight back. All right, so how do I know that this is a fuel send and this is a fuel return? Well, if you trace them back, you'll see that <clears throat> typically the fuel is supposed to go into the fuel. This is the fuel filter. It goes into the fuel filter and it comes out. You can see it says OUS or OUT here. Uh, that's a pretty big good clue as to which one's the, the send and return, but it goes in through this, this hose and then goes out into the engine, through the engine, and then comes back from the engine into the other side, which is your regulated side. Now, so basically you have fuel constantly pumping into the engine, into the fuel rail and coming back, and it's getting regulated by this regulator here that also has like a little vacuum line on it and a little uh, solenoid block here, uh, which actuates the amount of fuel that should be flowing in and, and back. So this whole assembly is um, going to be replaced with the E46M3 assembly, but, uh, and it's a very similar filter as, as well here. So this is actually gonna be a drop-in replacement, which is gonna be nice. But then uh, the fuel goes back in through the regulator and then out back into the tank. All right, so we have our filter and we have our regulator. This is from an E46M3. Essentially, what you're gonna have is you have your screw on with a copper, with a little copper washer there, and you have your screw on here. This is the out. Basically goes in just like that. Screws on. This is your vacuum. You gotta hook up engine vacuum to it. You can see the arrow clearly denotes the direction of flow. So this guy is gonna be coming from the fuel send, in through the filter, out. And this is gonna end up going to the engine. And this is the unused fuel that's going back to the return. And again, that's your, that's your 
vacuum. So that's basically it. It's pretty simple on how this thing works and it's all set it and forget it. So this thing should regulate our fuel pressure exactly where we want it, which is about five bar at idle. All right, let's try installing this thing for the first time, see if we have any interferences. Yeah, it looks like we got a problem right up in here. This bracket that was once holding the old regulator is now getting in the way of the new regulator. We have to cut this guy out. But you can see that the, uh, the return line is going to look like it lines up pretty well. The supply line is going to slip right in. So this might actually be a pretty easy install. Let's cut that bracket off. So here's what I've decided to do for the fuel send line. Outside the regulator, this guy right here, it needs to connect to this fuel line here that goes right into the engine. This is the fuel supply. Um, on the E92, this cable here, if you can see it correctly, it's got a special plastic hookup that is meant to go into this orifice. Basically pushes in and it locks it in place and then it goes directly to the fuel line, um, to the tank. So, I'm gonna reuse that, but in a slightly different capacity. I wanna to continue to use this connection here and go and, and make sure that it connects into that securely. But I'm also just gonna cut it here and I'm going to put a, a tube that goes from the outlet of the regulator into this tube and it's gonna be in pretty deep. And I'm gonna have a number of different Oetker clamps that connect it along the way to prevent any type of leaking from occurring at all in, the, in a high fuel pressure situation. Alright, so that just about does it for the fuel pump. Uh, you can see everything is hooked up. Okay. Got to run a vacuum line to the regulator. Right there. But this guy is hooked up to the fuel line. And when I take the engine out, I'll have to uh, probably just use the, maybe this guy in order to secure this line down to the, to the sidewall. Um, and then the only other one that I haven't done yet is a carbon canister line. Now that's this blue line here. Um, and that goes to this big, wider black one, which I think I'm just gonna end up using a different line on the engine side to hook up to this guy because it's just not gonna, this, two different diameters, it's just not gonna work very well. Um, so I'm gonna end up figuring something out while the engine is out. Uh, so that's gonna be uh, that. But other than that, I'm gonna put this cover back on just like this. All right, and, uh, and then the fuel supply should be pretty much taken care of, and then we can do the in-tank fuel pump. All right, guys, now it's time to take a look at the in-tank fuel pump, and here it is. Just like that. Let's get this thing unscrewed real quick. Oh, there it is. We gotta take
take that thing out of there and we got to replace it. Okay, so what I've identified is that this guy is a fuel tank um, level sensor. This is the pump here. The pump is usually, typically, um, with a green and violet stripe and then a brown stripe. That's usually the universal uh, code for uh, for fuel pump. And then there's also another fuel tank sensor on the other side um, because the tank is kind of like straddling the drive shaft, so it needs to have a tank sensor on both sides um, in order to know what the fuel, the real fuel level is. So basically, it's pretty simple here. There's also a fuel tank pressure sensor that's above, um, behind here inside the wheel well. Um, we gotta get that sensor replaced with the E92 one so that it recognizes it with the uh, with the new E92 N54 computer, um, so it can pass emissions. So we're gonna have to extract that as well. But we'll end up having to do that in another episode. So taking a minute to learn about how this fuel in-tank fuel pump assembly works, this got an integrated fuel level sensor. It's like a little resistor or rheostat here that basically defines a resistance value as the plunger gets higher and higher, the resistance value gets lower and lower, and that's interpreted at the instrument cluster as the needle goes fuller and lower. So it's basically just like a, like a closed loop type of feedback system. Um, and there's two wires, there's a black one and, the, and there's a, a, an R, a black one and a brown one, rather. And that goes into these two um, clips right here. The other two is for the pump, uh, and that is a red and a brown uh, on the pump itself. These are actually quite thin wires. Um, the new pump, which is uh, actually the exact same size as the existing pump, it's just going to have much better flow output. And that's exactly what we want. We want really good flow output. We don't want any type of restricted fuel flow. Um, this is actually going to be more or less a direct hookup. We might end up having to do some soldering for the wiring. But other than that, this should be pretty easy. You can see how this thing is kind of suspended in all these different axes here. So it kind of moves pretty freely on these little rubber isolators here. Um, and that was definitely meant for a technique uh, on purpose. So, um, And then this, this is a flexible hose that doesn't appear to have broken at all, so we'll end up continuing to use that. Uh, and that'll be it. So let's take a look and try to disassemble this and uh, replace it with the new pump. Replace the in-tank fuel pump with the Walbarrel 255. I've put a new Odeker clamp in. Odeker clamps are really the theme, the theme this last couple weeks, but they are important, right? Because this is what was on here before. This is what we're replacing it with now. Um, fuel level sender is still intact. Our little uh, absorbers are good. Um, let's go and put this thing back in the tank. fuel pump relay um, system that came off of the E92. Um, there's a lot of wires that are hooking up to this and for good reason because what it does is it actually uh, communicates on the CAN bus through the engine. The DME tells the fuel pump what speed the fuel pump itself should be running at for optimal most fuel efficient operation. So it communicates that through CAN and this CAN wiring that connects to this, that connects to the DME, and it tells through CAN messages how fast to pump the pump. And that then speeds up the pump or slows it down as needed. So that's really what this is uh, supposed to do. 
And if it doesn't get that communication back, it will have, have faults and we really can't have any faults. So therefore we need to hook this up. Now this is a pretty simple situation here. We have this guy, this long one here is going to the fuel pump itself. Just two big thick uh, wires that goes directly to the fuel pump. Now on this other connector, this little white connector here, we have this red and blue wire uh, wire wound. This is, these are your CAN wires, your PT CAN and high and low uh, wiring. So that needs to be hooked up to the DME. This is just a loop, so that one stays as is. Um, this green here, this one, this green one with the red stripe, this one here is uh, your, 50, your 12 volt wake up. So it's like your ACC, uh, 12 volt. And then these two are just power and ground. So this has to hook up to your power and your ground. Um, your fuse uh, needs to be fused power and ground. All right, so that's basically how this thing works. Um, I don't know what the CAN messages are, how they work. Um, I probably could sniff them out through the CAN bus sniffer um, if I really wanted to. In fact, I might need to do that if things aren't working exactly how I would expect them to. Um, but that's really how this EKPS system works. Um, and we're gonna end up hooking it up probably underneath the dashboard somewhere, part of the engine wiring. Um, it's going to end up working seamlessly with the DME um, at close proximity. And then this will just end up um, for the fuel pump wiring, we'll just end up sneaking right back into the fuel pump wiring in the car. That's all. All right, so that's just about it, guys. So, hey, that just about does it for today. Um, we talked about the fuel pump installation, the fuel filter, and the regulator installation. Um, we installed the fuel, the in tank fuel pump. Uh, we talked about the EKPWS, EP, EP, EKPS. <sighs> we talked about the EKPS, and, um, and we will be doing AC lines next, getting that out of the way. Didn't do some, some engine wiring before we start taking the engine out, and then we'll really start making some good progress. All right, guys, so thanks a lot for tuning in. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell your friends about the videos. Um, this will start getting a lot more exciting over the next month as we start uh, going through the first turnkey, uh, getting the car into final assembly, uh, getting everything nice and clean, uh, and it'll start getting really cool. So um, thanks a lot for sticking with me, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, make some good progress soon. All right, guys, take it easy. Later.